right, welcome everyone. Happy Saturday. Uh, go ahead and uh, get a brick and start out if you have one. If you don't, it's okay. You can just keep your feet a little bit apart. And you're going to sit in Dandasana or staff pose. And if you have the brick, you're going to put the brick between your big toes so that then with your big toes, you can spread your other toes wide apart. So keep pressing your big toes against the brick. If you don't have a brick, you can use a book or you can just press your big toes against each other. Either one of those things will work. But the idea is to get some spreading and opening in your toes, which makes it easier to get the muscles of your legs fully engaged. Can't see all of you. All right, so feel how your quadriceps drop more closer to your bones. Feel how your inner thighs lift just by pressing your toes together and spreading your other toes away from the big toes. When you do those actions, you should also feel a nice lift come into the chest. All right, then take your right hand on the inside of your right knee and move your knee out to the side. And take your other hand and turn the sole of the foot up toward the ceiling. And then do the same thing with the other leg. All right, so we're going to take both hands now and turn both soles of the feet up toward the ceiling. Use your thumbs on your big toe base joint and push down so you really get some opening in the feet. Then take your hand and move your calf flesh up toward the ceiling. Then take both of your hands and squeeze the top of your thigh, your right thigh, squeeze it in the flesh into the bone and then turn externally from the inside out your thigh. And then you can move a little lower down your leg and turn again. And you can even get down near toward your knee and turn a little bit more there. And you should feel that sitting bone on that side dry in more and lift come into the chest. Then do the same thing on the other side. And really use your hands and squeeze the skin to the flesh and the flesh to the bone. So when you turn from inside out, you really feel the whole femur bone kind of rotating more in the socket. And then you can work your way down your leg. Then press the tops of the feet down into the floor and energetically lift your ankles up. When you do those two things with the feet, you should feel some firmness come into the hips. Then lengthen up through your side ribs, make yourself as tall as you can from the pelvis, through the waist, through each individual rib, all the way up into the armpits, make yourself tall. Keep that height and roll your shoulder bones back. Bring your shoulder blades closer together on your back, away from your neck and into the center of the body so that the chest opens more. And that movement into the center of the body is actually kind of a diagonal movement from the lower shoulder blades up into the top chest, but also out to the edges of the collarbones. So you should feel both your chest lift and also your chest get broader. Then keeping your chest well lifted and broad, close your eyes and fold your palms together at your heart. If you're wearing glasses, you can go ahead and take them off for this opening ohms. Again, the reason for that is one, it makes it easier for your eyes to draw inward, but it's also a symbolic gesture that really what we're after in yoga is turning our awareness from the outer world, from all that's going on in our external experience toward the inner world, that inner landscape of you, the domain of yoga. Patanjali tells us that Yoga is the practice of stilling the fluctuations of the mind. But the reason we do that is so that we come to dwell in the seat of our own true splendor, our own true self. He gives us lots of ways that we can remove the obstacles towards seeing the inner self. And one of them is to work with the breath. So as you inhale, make yourself taller from the tailbone all the way up through your head. And as you exhale, move the prana or the energy of the breath outward toward your side ribs and armpits. Inhale, make yourself tall. Keep that height. Exhale, make yourself broad. Inhale, extend yourself. Exhale, expand yourself. Work with the breath that way until you really feel a more inner spaciousness, like you've gotten brighter or more full of energy on the inside. Then keep that feeling of spaciousness and turn your awareness specifically to your exhalation. Follow your exhalation with your mind. Like it's a pathway or a thread that you can follow from the outer world more deeply in. 
Patanjali also says that we can watch the pause that occurs at the end of each exhalation. Let your mind take on the qualities of that pause so that your mind becomes more serene, more sattvic, more still. And then from that still place within, let's chant three yams together. Oh, oh, oh. Follow that sound with your mind. Follow the reverberation of the sound with your mind. And from that space, inhale once more. Keep your chest well lifted and broad as you bring your chin down to your chest and your hands down to your thighs with your palms up. And then raise your head and open your eyes. And you can put your glasses back on if you wear them. Okay. And stretch your legs out again into Dandasana staff pose. And if you do have your brick handy, you can put the brick between your feet. If you don't, it's okay. Just pretend that you have a brick there and you can use like a a book. If you have a book that you could set up like that, you could probably even use like your laptop size. <laughs> press, the idea is you want to press the big toes into something so that there's a nice firm stable point your big toes can press into and then use that and spread your other toes away from your big toes. It works without the brick too. You can actually just press your big toes together and spread your other toes away. But when you do those actions just with the toes, again, what you should feel if you look down at your own quadriceps, you should actually feel that just that action of pressing the big toes engages the muscles of your legs very nicely. Keep spreading the toes and feel how your quadriceps engage more and more and more. And when your quadriceps engage like that, you should also feel your outer femur bones draw in and you should feel a lift come all the way up into the chest. All right, then let's do swastikasana or cross leg pose again. Take your left hand on the inside of your left knee, move the knee a little out to the side, take your right hand and turn the sole of the foot up toward the ceiling. And then bring the other leg in and take both hands and turn the soles of the feet up toward the ceiling. And working on getting additional flexibility in the feet. Use your thumbs and push the big toe base joints down a little bit so you're trying to get as much of the top part of the foot on the floor as you can. Right, then take your hands and move your calf flesh up toward the ceiling. And then again, use that, the, and externally rotate the thigh. And one really nice way to do that again is squeeze the top of your right thigh and turn. And then squeeze the middle of your thigh and turn. And then turn near your knee. And feel how that outer feet, the sitting bone draws in a little bit more and your outer hip gets a little bit more firm and a lift comes into the chest. And then make the other side match that. Okay. Good. And so now I feel like that my sitting bones have drawn in a little bit and I have this lift coming into the chest almost automatically. And press the tops of the feet down again and energetically lift your ankles up and stretch your hands out in front of you. Interlace your fingers and turn your palms toward me. This is called Urdhva Badangaliasana upward down finger pose. Okay. Keep extending from your elbows through your wrist bones and reach your hands all the way up toward the ceiling. Now push the tops of the feet down into the floor, energetically lift the ankles up and connect that lift of the ankles up with the reach upward of your wrists. So reach up so much that you actually feel length coming into the side ribs and into the armpits. Try and get your elbows as straight as you can. And then push down with your feet and lift up with your wrists one more time. Right now, as much as possible, try and keep this height in the sides of your torso as you bring your hands back down. Then switch the grip of your fingers so that the other finger is on top. And then stretch your hands out again. And then go back to the base and push the tops of the feet down and energetically lift your ankles up. And then maintain that work of the feet as you bring your hands up above your head again. Put the feet down and reach up through the wrist. Reach up so much that you really do feel the sides of the abdomen get longer, the sides of the ribs get longer, and your armpits open more and more and more. Then keep that height in the side ribs as you release your hands all the way down to the side. Put your fingertips on the floor behind you. Push down with your fingertips and lift up into the armpits. 
Roll the shoulders back again, and then bring your shoulder blades in toward each other, away from the neck and into the center of the body so that the chest opens a little bit more. And just from those actions, you should feel a little bit more vitality come into your chest. Okay. Then stretch your legs out again into Dandasana. You don't need to use the brick this time. Then we're going to do a pose called Anamukha Virasana or Downward Placing Child's Pose. I'm going to go to the side so you can see a little bit. So I'm sitting with my knees about at a, enough apart so when I fold forward, this outside part of my abdomen kind of rests on the inside part of my thigh. If it bothers your knees to sit this way, you can take a blanket or a towel and put them back behind your knees. And then you're just going to fold forward and put your head down on the floor. So Anamukha Virasana. Now we're facing child's pose. Move your outer ankles in, your outer calves in. And keep lengthening through your side ribs. Now turn your palms to face each other and observe how that gives you more opening across the collarbones. Then can you keep that opening across the collarbones as you turn your palms back down to the floor? All right, then come up a little bit off of your thighs and then you're gonna reach both of your hands over to the right so that your abdomen is kind of resting just on your right thigh. And then wiggle your fingers further forward. And you should feel a really nice lengthening and stretch come onto the left side of the body. I feel it particularly kind of right on the left part of my lower back. And then reach your right arm a little bit further forward and see if you can get a feeling of evenness on both sides of the body. And as you wiggle your hands back to the center, see if you can make yourself even longer as you do that. You're getting maximal length in the sides of the body. Then lift up a little bit again. You can even use your hand and move your abdomen flush from right to left. And then lay your abdomen over your left thigh. Wiggle your fingers out in front of you. And again, because you're at this angle or off to the side, you should feel more length automatically coming into the right side of the body, all the way through the lower back, through the rib cage, through the armpit. That happens automatically just because you're at the side. So go ahead and go with that feeling and then switch your awareness to the left hand and reach your left fingers forward or the opposite finger forward. So you get a little bit more of an even feeling in both sides of the torso. And then as you wiggle your hands forward, see if you can actually get even longer as you come back to the center. All right, then come up onto all fours. Press down through the thumb and the first finger and turn your triceps toward the camera and then turn your toes under and then push back into Anamukishwanasana, downward facing dog. Keep pressing your hands down and forward and move your thighs back. Then everyone keep pressing your hands down and forward and come up onto the balls of the feet. When you do that, push a little bit more through your big toes and you'll feel that your quadriceps engage more and more and more. Okay, lift up through the quadriceps and the inner thighs. Try and keep your elbows super, super straight. And then roll over the balls of the feet and reach your heels way, way, way back behind you. Like someone in the days before social distancing would come up behind you and put a rope around your top thighs and pull them straight back. You just do that for yourself. Good. And then walk forward till your feet are right underneath your hips. Place your hands on your pelvic bones, roll your shoulder bones back, and then come all the way up, and then stand in Tadasana. Okay, so before we were sitting, we were working with the brick between the feet, but now you can keep your feet together and try and press your big toes against each other and spread your other toes wide apart. 
And as you work with those actions of the feet, you should automatically feel some musculature in your legs beginning to engage. Then move the buttock flush down toward the heels and lift your quadriceps and your inner thighs up. And lengthen up through your side ribs, roll the shoulder bones back, and stretch through your ring fingers. The more you stretch through your ring fingers, the more you should feel the triceps come onto the bone and your arms get straighter and straighter and straighter. Then reach your arms up above your head into Urdhva Hastasana, upward hand pose. And really reach up through those ring fingers. Again, you wanna lift up so much, you can feel your shoulders kind of scrunch up towards your ears, that's okay. But you do wanna keep your trapezius muscles moving away from your neck. So just make yourself maximally tall so you really feel length coming into the side ribs. And to get more length, take your right hand with your left wrist and pull that arm up. So you're really getting long. And even tip over a little bit and keep on pulling on your wrist so you're getting longer and longer through that side lift, like you were doing when you were on the floor in downward facing child's pose. Now when you come back to the center, pull even more so you get taller still. And then do the same thing with the opposite wrist. So hold on to your left wrist with your right hand and pull up. Press down through your heels as you reach up through your ring fingers. There you go. Then tip over a little bit so that movement to the side actually gives you more and more length in the side ribs. And then get even more length as you reach yourself all the way back to the center. You can even push your hands back behind you a little bit to open the shoulders more. And then join your palms together and reach your fingers up toward the ceiling again. And then turn your palms and press down through the air element as you bring your hands off to your sides. And you should feel more opening and vitality. I feel more broadness across the collarbones as well. You're getting more and more energy in the body. All right, then if you have bricks for trikonasana, you can use them, but you don't need to have them. You can put your hand on your shin also. All right, but walk your feet out wide. And for the wide leg standing poses, generally you wanna have your feet almost as wide as your hands are, or well, really where your wrists are. Yeah. Now move your buttocks down, press down into the heels and lift your quadriceps and your inner thighs up. Stretch through your ring fingers, move your shoulder blades in toward each other, away from the neck and into the center of the body so that the chest opens more. Then turn your back to your left toes in a little bit and your front right leg out. Oh, and look, this is, this is, you can put your hands on your hip for a second. When you turn your leg out, actually lift up on your toes up off of the floor and rotate or spin on that heel. And you'll feel a similar action that you did in the seated position when, you're, when your sitting bone gets a little bit more in toward the midline. And then put your foot down. Then stretch your arms up. Now press into your, your left heel and reach way, way, way out with your right hand. Reach out as much as you can. And you can see I'm even lifting up a little bit because I'm really trying to get this length to come into the side of my torso and keep that length as much as possible as you bring your hand either down to your shin or to a brick. Your top left hand you can keep on your hip for now and turn your torso toward the camera. Then reach your top arm all the way up and press into your back heel, reach up with your hand and come all the way back to the center. Spin on your heel back to Uttita Hastapadasana or extended hand and foot pose. Then turn your opposite toe, that right toes in and lift your left toes way, way, way up and spin on your heel. And when you really spin on your heel, you'll feel that outer femur bone really get seated better in the socket. Then extend and put your foot back down on the floor. All right, then reach way, way, way out with your left hand this time. Even lift your left arm up. And so you're trying to get length. So stretch through those fingers as much as you can. And then as much as you can, keep that length in the side rib as you bring your hand down to your shin or to the brick. You can keep your right hand on your hip for now and turn your torso away from the leg. Then reach your arm all the way up. Trikonasana, triangle pose. And then lift back up, turn your feet back to the center, and then walk your feet back into Tadasana again. And then feel the effect that the Trikonasana has on your Tadasana. 
We have the legs out wide, which helps open the hips. And then when you bring your legs back in to the standing pose, you should feel more firmness in the outer hips and more opening in the front of your groin. If you don't feel those things, it's okay. You might feel something slightly different, but just get in the habit of observing the effect that different poses have on each other. Okay. Uh, this particular sequence that I'm working with today is one that my sister and I have practiced together a few times, and it's specifically aimed at opening the front groin. And we're probably all sitting a lot more today, looking at I mean, these days, looking at the computer all the time. And so I just noticed that my own uh, hips often have this like a kind of tight sensation in the front. And so this sequence is good for working through that. Okay. So you're going to sit on the floor and take your legs out wide, almost as wide as triangle pose. And I'm actually sitting so that my heels <coughs> are lined up with the front edge of the sticky mat. And then spread across the toes again so you can feel your quadriceps engage. Lengthen up through your side ribs and roll the shoulder bones back again and take your fingertips and put your fingertips back behind you. Push down on the fingertips and lift up into the armpits. Make yourself tall. Oh, if you, have a, if you need something to sit on when you're sitting in this way, you can take a blanket and put it underneath your buttocks. And how you would know that is if your back is just like kind of really rounded and you can't really lift up into the chest, then you should sit up on some height. And if you don't have special yoga blankets, it's okay. You can use like a little pillow or you can like fold up some towels to something that's like a special yoga blanket. All right, then reach your arms up again into Earth the Hastasana. And you may notice that it's a lot harder to reach your arms up like this than it was when we were standing. So extend through the feet, press your heels down and reach up through the ring fingers. But you should feel that your abdomen begins to draw in and that your armpits get a little bit more open. And reach up through the ring fingers again. Keep that height as much as possible as you bring your fingertips back behind you on the floor and push down with those fingertips and lift up into the armpits. Roll the shoulder bones back again. And work with these shoulder blade actions we've been working with. With your shoulder blades, I, my hands are just here representing my shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades move in, away from the neck, and then into the center of the body and up a little bit so that you really feel that lift come into the center part of your chest and out to the edges of the collarbones. Right. Now take your right hand on the inside of your right knee and then bring this leg into Baddha Konasana or bound angle pose. You're gonna start off with this bent leg on the very much on the little toe side of the foot. And extend from your inner knee through your inner heel so that you really come onto that little toe side of the foot. And when you do those actions again with the feet, what happens is you should feel your femur bones draw in a little bit more. Then take your hand and turn that sole of the foot up toward the ceiling like we did in the cross leg pose at the beginning of class. Now, when I turn the foot that way, you probably see that it actually gets my knee to go down a little bit more, and I feel a little bit more length coming into my inner leg. Then reach your hands up here. It's even harder <laughs> when the leg is in Baddha Konasana, so I really have to push down with the foot and lift up even more to try and get that same height. And then reach your fingertips back down again. And then stretch your leg out into Upavishta Konasana, or seated wide angle pose again. Extend through your inner feet and from the little toe side of the foot, draw all the way up into your outer hip. Maintain that nice integrity of your right leg as you bring your left leg into Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose. You know, there are two main foot positions that we can work with in this pose. The first one is you're really on the little toe side of the foot. So extend from your inner knee through your inner heel. So the foot is more like a tadasana or a mountain pose foot. And working with the foot that way gives you some more firmness in the outer hips. That's good, it helps compact the hips. But we also want to get opening in the inner groin. So now turn the sole of that foot up toward the ceiling and you can maybe move your knee out a little bit wider. And when I do that, my knee goes down more and I can get more length from that inner groin all the way through the inner knee. 
Push the foot down and energetically lift your ankle up. And then see, maybe this side's a little bit better. Can you get a little bit more lift when you reach your arms up into Urdhva Hastasana? And then bring your hands all the way back down. And then stretch your leg out again. All right, for this next one, I do actually myself need to sit on a little bit of height. I'm getting a blanket, sitting on it. And this time you're going to bring your right leg up into Marichyasana 1. Just fold the leg up. And you can actually turn the foot out a little bit. And I'm actually hooking the shin with my hand or with my, with my forearm and pulling in a little bit. And I'm even turning to the side. Remember how when we were laying down on the floor in Adamuka downward facing child's pose? You're trying to actually kind of line up your abdomen with your thigh here. So I've turned to the side a little bit. I'm pulling my thigh in and I lift up. And when you, when you do that, it actually seats the femur bone more firmly in the socket. So you should sort of feel that femur bone moving down. Then when you switch the leg back to Baddha Konasana, it should go down a little bit more readily. Yeah. So I'm feeling a little bit more opening coming into this inside part of my groin. And then stretch your leg out again. And I also felt when I stretched my leg out that my whole leg just kind of sucked down toward the floor a little bit more readily, which is nice. All right, now fold your opposite leg in, turning the foot out slightly. And I'm turning my torso even a little bit, wrapping my arm around my shin and lift, pulling that leg in and lifting myself up. It's really just like a seated version of downward facing child's pose. So pull in, and that seats the femur bone more into the socket more readily. Yeah. And it's also a good, on, a nice feeling on the side of the abdomen as well. Then just turn your leg and let it flop down back to Baddha Konasana again. And see if you can feel a little bit more openness or fluidity beginning to come into those muscles that connect the pelvis with the leg. And then stretch that leg back out into Upavishta Konasana. And here's a really fun thing that we're going to do. <laughs> then bring that leg back into Baddha Konasana. Again, you're going to first leg back into Baddha Konasana. Again, you're going to turn your torso. So ideally, your torso is lining up with that bent leg. And then fold forward over your bent leg. You can walk your fingers, wiggle your fingers forward. And then come up, back to seated, and see if you can feel a little bit more opening coming into the groin each time. We're going to do that two more times on this side. So turn your torso. You can even use your hand and move your abdomen from left to right, your ribs from left to right. So then you can fold a little bit more fully over that leg. Walk your hands out in front of you. And work with your breath a couple of times as you inhale, wiggle your fingers out a little bit more. As you exhale, draw your abdomen in toward the spine. And then keep that leg down as you come all the way back up to the center. And then one more time to this side. Karen, if that bothers your hip, that forward folding, you can take a little blanket or something and put it between your pelvis and your thigh, okay? All right, so you want to just be careful on that forward folding stuff, or you can just stay upright if that feels better. All right, and then one more time, fold forward. You should also, it's okay if your extended leg sitting bone comes up, you don't need to worry about that, but do try to keep the muscular engagement of the leg. Good, and then come all the way up. Move your leg back out to Upavishta Konasana. And I'm actually feeling more width coming into the pelvic region just from having done that one side. And it makes me want to do the other side. Hopefully it makes you want to do it too. <laughs> All right, so bring that second leg into Baddha Konasana, turn the sole of the foot up toward the ceiling and turn your torso now away from your straight leg and toward the bent leg. You can use your hand to move the abdomen from right to left and then fold forward over that leg. Wiggle your fingers forward. 
And then keep that knee down as much as possible as you come up. Observe the effect in your hip socket. And we'll do that two more times. Fold forward. Walk your fingers forward. You should feel a nice sensation of stretch also in the back of your body, in the sides of the body, and also the release in the groin. Which should enable you as you come up to keep that leg a little bit more down. And then last time on this side, turn your torso and fold forward. Keep extending through your right straight leg as you reach your fingers over your knee. And then keep your bent leg down as much as possible as you come back up. And then stretch your legs back out into Upavishta Konasana again. Then bring them into Dandasana. And then stand up into Dasana, Mountain Pose. And as you're standing here in Tadasana, observe the effect of this Tadasana from the first one we did. So I'm just going to tell you what I'm feeling. You may not feel the same things, but just see if you can feel some sensations that are different in this Tadasana. I feel that my heels are more rooted with the earth. I feel that my outer thighs have drawn in a little bit more, and I feel taller through the front of my body. And then, and then stretch your fingers down toward the floor and just be in Tadasana. So a couple of weeks ago, we were working with that idea of um, thinking about a mountain and what are the qualities of a mountain that you might want to have in your being. So, you know, mountains are rooted into the earth and they also extend upward toward the skies. All right, then walk your feet back out to triangle pose and let's do triangle pose again. And you should feel that this triangle pose goes a little easier than the first one we did. So just even in walking my feet out, I actually have a little bit more ability to get my feet out wide. I already feel that I have more opening through the front groin. And stretch your arms out and then turn your back toe, your right left toes in a little bit. Come up on the heel of your front leg and spin your foot. So that the toes point straight to the wall to the opposite side of you. Then bend your front knee just a little bit and lift up through the quadriceps a little bit more as you straighten the leg. So hopefully that keeps your leg from hyperextending. Then press through your heel and again reach way, way, way out with your right hand. You can even reach the arm up a little bit. And that helps you get that same length in the side ribs like we were doing in, in um, Downward facing child's pose and in the seated work. And put your gun and put your hand on your center of the brick. Lengthen through both side ribs. Roll the shoulders back. You can even take your left hand and put it on your right pelvic bone and turn your pelvic bone. And you can turn your ribs and broaden your collarbones and reach your hand up toward the ceiling. So hopefully this trikonasana feels a little bit more open than the first one. And press into your back heel, reach with your top arm and come all the way up and turn your feet back into the center. If you need to rest your hands, it's totally fine to do so. In fact, that feels good to me. I put them on my hips. And then you can use your hands to move the buttock flush down. Huh. Can y'all still see me? Yes, we can see you. I can see you. Okay, good. For some reason, I got to notice that I had been signed out, um, but I'm still here, I guess. Okay, it's good to know that I'm here. <laughs> so, all right, second side, Trikonasana. And do that heel spinning. You don't always have to do that, but just observe when you do lift your toes up that that outer femur bone really draws in. And then reach through your fingers again. Keep reaching up and I'm actually lifting my arm up. Again, you don't always have to do that. But when you lift the arm up, it really gives you this nice length in the side of your body. And then bring your hand down to your shin. You can keep your top hand on your hip for now and turn your torso. Then take your hand and move that pelvic bone from right to left. You can move your ribs, from, sorry, from left to right for y'all. Right, and then come all the way back up with your hand. 
Trikonasana. And then come all the way back up. Bring your feet back to the center. And then walk your feet back into the dasana. And feel the effect again that your trikonasana has on your tadasana. I feel more rooted in the hips, but I feel more lift coming into the chest. More rooted through the heels and more lift coming into the chest. Then reach your arms up again into Urdhva Hastasana. And notice how much easier it is to lift your arms above your head than it is when you're sitting. You can get maximally tall. All right, and then push your palms all the way back down again so you feel some nice lift coming into your chest. All right, let's do Vrikshas in our tree pose. Right, so turn your right leg out, lift your right leg up, keep pressing into your left heel to get your ankle and put your heel as high in your thigh as you can. Push your foot and your thigh into each other so that your outer femur bones draw in. You can use your hand and externally rotate the bent leg like we were doing in the beginning opening seated pose work. Then reach your arms way, way, way up again into Urdhva Hastasana. Lift up as much as you can. If you can, join your palms together and reach up through your fingers. Go ahead and do so and finish the pose. But it's okay to keep your hands here. And then bring your hands down and come into Tadasana again. Observe that maybe that hip feels a little bit more open now, having done the Vrikshasana. Press into your left hip and turn your right leg out. Lift your right leg up, sorry, left leg. Lift up even higher, place your hand on your ankle, and then get your heel as high on your thigh as you can. You can use your left hand now and try and turn the femur bone a little bit more externally like we were doing in that first seated work. Lengthen up through your side ribs and then reach your arms way, way, way up. Press down into your heel and lift up through your palms. If you can completely join your palms together, do so. But if you can't, that's also okay. And then bring your arms down and bring your leg down. And observe the effect that tree pose has on your Tadasana. So I feel that the outer back of my buttocks after having done tree pose are a little bit firmer, moving in more toward the midline. And that firmness of the outer hips helps release the inner leg tightness and also gives you lift in the chest. All those are really valuable things. All right, walk your feet out wide again. This time we're gonna do a pose called Parjvakanasana and we're gonna do it in a couple of different stages. That means side angle pose. You can turn your left toes in and spin on your heel if that's working for you. And take your awareness to this outer right left hip. Okay? And from your outer left hip, bend your knee to form a square. So you're not just bending, but you can try it differently. You can just bend the leg a couple times and you can just bend the leg. But if you actually think about the bend of the leg starting from this outer hip, it bends a little bit more readily, at least for me. Right, so you can try the difference, just bend and straighten a couple times without focusing on the outer hip. And then it's just like a leg action. But if you can press through your back heel and push from your outer hip, then the leg just releases with a lot more fluidity. Then bend over and put your left, your right elbow on your thigh, and then you can sit a little bit deeper, and then turn your torso away from the wall behind you. Then add your arm, press into your left heel and extend through your ring finger, and feel that same opening stretch coming into the side of the torso. This is called side flank pose. And this is the whole side flank of the body that you're really trying to stretch and extend. Then press into your left heel and pull up with your arm. Come back to the center. Turn your feet. But again, from your left outer hip, bend the knee. Sorry, right outer hip, bend the knee. And you can make the same experiment. What happens if you just bend the leg? All right. Then what happens if you bend the leg with the idea that you're bending from that outer hip? For me, it just feels like the leg is lengthening and there's a more integrated action throughout my whole body. And then fold over your thigh, put your left forearm on your thigh, and you may be able then to sit down a little bit more with the pressure of the arm. 
And then turn your torso away from your leg. And then finish the pose by stretching through those right ring fingers. Press through your right heel and extend through those ring fingers so you really feel this whole sensation of stretch come into the body, of the side of the body. Side plank pose. Then press into your right heel and come all the way back up. Turn your feet and then come back to Tadasana again. So each time I'm returning to Dadasana, what I'm feeling is I eat after each standing pose and the return to Tadasana, I feel more and more rooted through my heels, which results in me feeling a little bit taller. I also feel more firmness in my outer hips and more opening in my front groin. All right, so now we're going to do Parsha Kanasana again, but we're going to put the hand on the inside of the foot. You might need a block for this one. So it looks like this, do it along with me. I've turned my feet, then from that outer hip, I bend the knee, I've already made that experiment, so I know that it works. I'm gonna come under the elbow first, and then I'm just gonna sneak my hand down to a brick, or maybe down to the floor. Sit a little bit deeper by bending my knee more, and then I stretch my arm out above my head. Parjvakanasana. Side plank pose. It's a little harder sitting this much more deeply, but it's worth it. And then come all the way back up. Turn your feet to the center. If you've only got one brick, now would be a good time to switch it. And from your outer right hip, bend your left knee. Come down to your elbow on your thigh and turn a little bit more. See if you can sit a little bit deeper. And keeping your torso turned toward the camera as much as you can, reach down and get your fingertips down on the floor or use the brick, then straighten your right arm and finish the pose. And then come all the way up, turn your feet, walk your feet in again and bring your hands down. And again, observe the effect of your Tadasana, on your Tadasana, not of your Tadasana. Okay, let's try Vrikshasana or tree pose one more time, and then we're going to go for half moon pose as our grand finale standing pose. All right, so turn your right leg out again. Press down into your heels. You lift your right leg up. Lift the leg up high. Get your ankle and place your heel as high in your thigh as you can. If you're feeling a little bit wobbly, you can go and be against a wall. I'm actually going to do that myself right now. Even if you're not feeling wobbly, sometimes it is really nice to work with the wall because you can spend a little bit more time with the alignment of the pose. So now I'm really turning with my hand, that femur bone. I push my heel and my thigh into each other so that my hips get a little bit more compact and I have a little bit more opening in the chest. And then you can reach your arms up here. I have special yoga ropes that I can reach up and pull on, but you don't need to have yoga ropes to do the pose. And then release your arm down and release your leg down and observe the effect there. Okay, so my right hip does feel different than my other hip. Each pose, you should actually feel like you're penetrating more deeply into your own embodied experience. Then turn your leg out, lift your leg up, Take hold of your ankle and put your heel as high on your thigh as you can. Push the foot and the thigh against each other and you'll feel those outer femur bones draw in. You can do that rotation of the thigh also. Then reach your arms up. Press down into the heel that you're standing on and lift your fingers up toward the sky. Feel that same stretch that we've been working on all class coming into the sides of the torso. And then bring your palms down and bring your leg down and stand in Tadasana. Okay, so the next pose that we're doing is called Ardha Chandrasana, means half moon pose. And I personally am going to do it with my back foot at the wall, but you can also do it with your whole back against the wall, or you don't even have to have a wall, okay? But I will use a brick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn toward the wall and measure a leg distance away from the wall. I turn around in that space, put my foot down, put my hand on the brick, 
And then I'm gonna reach my toes toward the wall, okay? So it just looks like that. And if you don't have a wall, it's okay. You can just be in Ardich and dress in a half moon toes. And then try and turn your torso away from your standing leg as much as you can. Y'all are all looking, those of you I can see are looking pretty good. Very nice. Good, and then come down. And then you're gonna do the other side. If you have the wall, you can remeasure if you want, but hopefully your legs are more or less the same length. Then you just stand in that same place that you're measured. Turn your foot forward, put your hand on a brick, your other foot toward the wall. And if you want to get a little bit more refined in the foot on the wall action, you actually can just put the ball of the foot and the big toe on the wall. If you put your whole heel on the wall, it's fine, but you maybe can observe the effect in the hip, what's different when you dig your heel into the wall versus when you put the ball of the foot and the big toe on the wall. There's a little bit more engagement in the outer hip. This is really one of my favorite poses to do. I really feel lots of opening in the front of the body. Sometimes I imagine I'm just like an airplane flying through space when I'm in this particular pose. All right, good. And then come down and stand in Tadasana. And I feel that after each one of these, each time my outer hip's getting a little firmer, getting a little bit taller through the front of my body, and more lift in the chest. All right now we're gonna do a pose called Prasarda Padottanasana, which is extended wide leg pose. Okay, so you're gonna turn, well, or just be on your mat. You don't have to necessarily turn, depends on how your mat is. This one, your feet go straight ahead, and you're gonna bring your hands down to the floor, and then try and get your head to go all the way down to the floor also. If your head doesn't go to the floor, it's okay. You can put some vorts underneath it or a brick if you have a yoga brick. Keep pressing down into your heels, lift up through your inner thighs and your quadriceps. You have to bend your knees, you have to bend your knees, it's okay. Oh, nice Deborah. <laughs> That's good. All right. All right. And then just stay on your head. If you can. Good. And then press down into your heels and come all the way up. We're going to do that pose again, and I just want you to do a different hand position and see if you can feel the difference across the collarbones. Okay, so the normal, you know, the classic pose is your hands, hands are right, kind of like in a triangle by your head, like you're going to come up into a tripod headstand. Right, but instead, you're going to bring your hands, I guess I should turn this way, you're going to bring your hands all the way out to your ankles. And I like to do it that way sometimes, not always, but when I bring my hands out to my ankles like that, what I feel is more broadness across my collarbones and a little bit of a sort of inward moving of my brain more toward the center of my body. And you can go back and forth with the hand position a couple times and see, can you feel a difference? Put your hands just down on the floor for the classic Prasarda Padottanasana, and then you can walk your hands out wide and see if you can feel the difference. Both of them are right or correct to do. Nice. Looks good, everyone. All right, and then place your hands on the floor. Place your hands on your pelvic bones, roll your shoulder bones back, and come all the way up and back to Tadasana again. <clears throat> okay, now we're moving more toward uh, the inversion restorative part of class, and we're going to do the same basic poses we've been working on lately. They're all part of the immunity sequence, so. and it's good to work on your immunity obviously. Okay, the first one we're going to do, see I have this brick and it's on the top of my head. Yeah. Right in the top part of your head that you would stand on for headstand. Okay. Then move my feet about hip width apart, maybe a little bit more, and then put my hands on the floor and my head on the brick. 
Again, you don't have to have a fancy yoga brick. You can just get a pile of books. But the idea is you do want to have something in your head in contact with something, hopefully. I mean, the pose is still good, even if your head is not in contact with anything. It's just that that contact or that stimulation of the crown chakra is really good. This pose is called Uttanasana, or intense pose. It's particularly intense on some people's hamstrings. So if you need to bend your knees a little bit to be a little bit more comfortable in the pose, you can. Doing this pose as part of the immunity sequence is not so much about getting your hamstrings as straight as possible as much as is getting your head below your heart. Right. Well, in a little while, we're going to do a headstand, and those of you who don't do headstand, you can do this pose instead okay? because you're getting that same stimulation of the crown chakra. You can work to stay in this pose up to like three to five minutes and you'll feel more and more good effect. Yeah, but we're not gonna stay that much longer. Yeah. In fact, you're gonna take your hands, put them on your hips, roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. And this time, I mean, you can focus on what it gives your Tadasana, but I'm actually more interested in you feeling, what is your brain or what are your sinuses and your mind kind of feel like after having been in that beginning movement toward being upside down. So I personally feel that my brain feels like just like a little less tight. Yeah. Like it's moving away from the sides of my head and has a little bit more spacious feeling. Yeah. Okay, the next pose in this immunity sequence is uh, called downward facing child, I'm oh, sorry, downward facing dog, but we're gonna do it with head support if possible. And you can use a brick, you can use blocks, you can use folded blankets, but you want to try and get the crown of your head to touch the brick. It's very soothing. And then how you get in it is when you come into downward facing dog, you're going to put the brick right underneath your chest. And I look forward as I go into the downward facing dog because I want to get into downward facing dog first as much as I can and then hang the head so it just rests on the brick. Sometimes when we work with the brick, the tendency is just to collapse down and get the head on the brick at all costs. And instead what you want to do is pull back in the downward facing dog as much as you can. So then your forehead just releases down to the brick. And this is also very soothing for the mind. You do have to keep your arms straight, try and keep your legs straight. And observe also, you know, get off class, we've really worked with getting this opening in the side ribs and the armpits. All of that helps with breathing. And feel the effect of that good work that we did in this downward facing dog that you're doing here. It should feel much easier to be in the pose now than it did in that first opening downward facing dog that we did a little while ago, the beginning of class. This is another pose if you were just doing it in terms of the immunity sequence, you could work up to staying three to five minutes in. It's fine just to stay a minute, it's still good. Right, and then walk forward till your feet are right underneath your hips. Place your hands on your pelvic bones, roll your shoulder bones back again, and come back into the dasana. And this time, when you're observing the effect, focus specifically on how, how your brain or your mind or your head feels. Right. So I feel in this one, as opposed to Uttanasana, I feel a little bit like my front brain has moved a little bit more away from my forehead on the inside. For me, Uttanasana works more on the side of my head, and the downward facing dog works more on the front brain. You may or may not feel that same thing. You may feel it differently, but the point is just to observe the effect that that inversion kind of work has on you. All right, uh, we're gonna do Prasarada Padottanasana again because it's also in the immunity sequence. It was also in the other part of the sequence I was doing. That's the one with your, where your legs are wide apart. And you're gonna fold forward, put your head on the floor again, or on bricks. 
And observe, does this second prasarna padottanasana feel, or I guess it's the third one actually, feel a little bit more open in your hips? I was also, when I was in it for just a little while, I was also feeling that a little bit more awareness of the effect of the pose has on my brain from having done uttanasana and downward facing dog just before it. I also felt some release in my sinuses. All right, then place your hands on your pelvic bones, roll your shoulder bones back and come all the way up. All right, now it's time to do headstand. Uh, again, in this online format, I'm not actually teaching headstand. If you know how to do headstand, you should do headstand. You can do it at a wall, you can do it at the middle of the room, you can do tripod headstand, you can do headstand like this. If you don't do headstand for any reason, for instance, like if you are on your cycle, if your neck bothers you, if you just don't know how to do headstand, if you have glaucoma, uh, any, any reason that you don't want to do headstand, totally fine. What you're going to do instead is one of those first three poses that we just did. So if you're not doing headstand, again, your choice is this Uttanasana, standing floor bend, the downward facing dog, or the Prasarana Padottanasana. So go ahead and set up wherever you're gonna set up for headstand. And it can be at the wall. It can be in the middle of the room. If you're in the middle of the room, make sure wherever you set up that if you, you would have room to fall behind you. I'm just gonna do it at the wall. I'm gonna interlace my fingers, put my head on the floor, and then come up into Shirshasana. So the crown of the head's on the floor. Press your forearms down, lift your shoulders up, move your buttocks up towards your heels, turn the thighs in, and it should feel nice. If you're doing downward facing dog instead, that's totally fine. Try and get your heels lined right up over your head. Keep pressing your forearms down, keep lifting your shoulders up, keep extending through your heels. If you're doing any one of the other poses, it's totally fine. Again, headstand's another thing that you can work on staying, you know, three to five minutes, but that develops over time. Okay. It's, not, it's not something you can just decide to do. Yeah, you have to like kind of start with 30 seconds and work up to a minute. Then over time, you work up to three minutes and up to five minutes, and some crazy people even stay like 10 minutes in Shoshasana. I'm not really a 10 minute Shoshasana doer anymore, but I do try and generally do like five ish a day. All right. When you're coming out of whatever pose you're in, particularly if you're in headstand, press your forearms down, lift your shoulders up, and lower yourself down on the floor. And then everyone's gonna do. Now we're facing child's pose again. After a headstand, I actually like to do it with my head on a brick. It just feels nicer to me than putting my head on the floor. You're just gonna come and rest in downward facing child's pose. And let everything kind of even out. And then come all the way up and sit in a Virasana, which is hero's pose. I suppose I'm sitting in now. I'm sitting on a brick, but you could sit with your feet between your heels, depending on how you are. And if you happen to have a second brick handy, you can go ahead and put it behind you. We're gonna work on a couple of seated twists. So lengthen up through your side ribs and roll your shoulder bones back. And place your left hand on the brick behind you and your right hand on your left thigh. Inhale, lengthen up through your side ribs again. And then exhale, turn and rotate. It's nice to do a little bit of twisting after being upside down and headstand because it can relieve any tension that might have come into the neck from doing Shirshasana. Okay, so as you inhale, lift up through your side ribs again and roll your shoulder bones back. And then turn to the left again. One more time, inhale, lift up through your side ribs and armpits, and then exhale, turn your torso. 
And I feel a lot of release coming into my thoracic spine when I do that. And then come back to the center. And I feel when I'm back at the center that I'm a little bit taller. And then move your, we're gonna go to the second side now. So put your left hand on your right thigh, your right hand on the brick behind you. If you don't have a brick behind you, it's okay. You can actually just put your hand on your yoga pants. It's actually kind of a nice way to do it. And you can actually pull on your yoga pants to help you turn around or whatever kind of pants you're wearing. I'm just turning back to the front now. And so keep pressing down through your shins and lift up through the side ribs all the way up through the head. And as you exhale, turn and rotate around a little bit more. Inhale, lift up, make yourself tall. And then as you exhale, turn and rotate yourself around. Inhale, lift up, make yourself tall. And then you're going to exhale, turn and rotate around again and really feel how this particular twist talks to the middle of your back and releases tension that might build up in the middle back. Right, and then come back to the center. You should feel a little bit taller. Right, and then stretch your legs out. And we're going to do a pose that's called Brick Setubanda. They are bridge support, brick supported bridge. And you don't have to do this with a brick. You could do just regular. I'm going to show it both ways. Actually, we're going to do both. I'm going to change my mind. The first thing that we're going to do is a pose called Chatush Padasana. It means four pod pose. And then we're going to do brick satyavanda, and you'll feel the difference in them if you have the brick. Okay, so chatush padasana, you just bring your feet in close to your buttocks, you're laying down on your back, and you press down into the heels and lift the buttocks up high. When you lift those buttocks up, move your hamstrings and your buttocks toward each other, and you'll feel that that part of your body gets a little bit tighter, and you have a little bit more opening in your front groin. Then interlace your fingers, Press your arms down and lift your chest up. Okay, so the four paws of the pose are the heels and the shoulders. So see if you can get your shoulders a little bit more tucked underneath you. And press your feet down with your buttocks up high. Press your arms down so your chest opens. Then release your fingers and lower your torso down toward the floor. But try and keep your shoulders tucked so that your chest stays nice and open. It should feel good. In fact, it should feel so good that you want to do it two more times. <laughs> so press your feet down again and lift your buttocks up. Make sure that your hamstrings and buttocks are nicely engaged. You can even kind of poke your hamstring buttock area with your fingers and you'll feel a little firmness coming there. And then interlace your fingers underneath your buttocks if you can, or hold on to a strap if you don't want to use your fingers. And then see if you need to tuck a little bit more. Can you also move your shoulders a little bit away from the ears? And press the feet down, press the shoulders down, open your chest. Now, when you release your fingers, try to keep your shoulders and your chest this in that configuration and just lower your buttocks down to the floor. And you should feel more fluidity and vitality coming into the chest. And then do it one last time. Three Chatush Padasanas. So press your feet down, lift the buttocks up high. Tuck your shoulders underneath you. Some of you might even be able on this third one to walk your feet in a little bit and see if you can actually grab your ankles with your hands. And then you can push that whole arm down and lift the chest. Keep pushing the heels down to lift the buttocks up higher. Then keep the chest as lifted as you can as you lower your buttocks down. Okay, so that's called Chatush Padasana. The difference between Chatush Padasana and Brick Satyabandha is that you have to come up on your toes so you have room to get Brick underneath your sacrum. And then you just let your buttocks come down onto the brick. If you don't have a brick and you don't have anything to put your buttocks on, you can just repeat Chatush Padasana. But those of you who are in the supported Satyabandha, even though the shape of the pose is very, very similar, observe the different feeling in your brain. When you have the support of the brick, 
It's a little bit more like shoulder spin in its feeling. And the brain draws in. Your chest and your chin are in something that's called Jalandhara Bandha. And it is very soothing for the brain region. It, uh, it works with the back of the brain. So in Uttanasana, at least for me, I was feeling the release in the sides of my head. In Downward Facing Dog, I was feeling the release of the front of my brain. And now in this one, I'm feeling more release in the back of the brain. And that may or may not be true for you. But just observe the effect of this pose. All right. And then to come out of the pose, you have to come up under the balls of the feet again so that you can lift the, get the brick out of the way and then lower your buttocks down to the floor. All right. Now it is time for either legs up the wall pose and then Shavasana, or you can just go straight into Shavasana if you don't have wall space. Okay. So legs up the wall pose is exactly what it says. If you have some wall space, you can just put your legs up the wall and it's very restful. If you don't have wall space, it's okay. You just get to have a little bit extra time in Shavasana, okay? So those of you who want to go into legs up the wall pose, go ahead and go into legs up the wall pose for a few minutes. Those of you who just want to go into Shavasana, just go straight into Shavasana. So we'll do two or three minutes of legs up the wall pose and then everyone will be in Shavasana. So legs up the wall pose is also in the immunity sequence. It goes Uttanasana, Adhimukha Svanasana, Prasarada Pada Uttanasana, Shirshasana, Cherubhipada, which we didn't do, and then something like shoulder stand and then Vipreta Karani. And so I'm trying to get some version of most of those poses in at the end of every class, even if we don't do them a really long time. Just so you begin to get some familiarity with the poses that are specifically aimed at improving energy and immunity. They're also really good for your emotional state as well, getting upside down. I would say this practice of getting upside down is really where I feel the most transformative effect of yoga. All right, those of you who are in legs up the wall pose, you can push out of legs up the wall pose now and then set up for Shavasana. Shavasana is corpse pose and there are lots of ways to do it. You could put your legs up on a chair if you're feeling some lower back discomfort. You could put a blanket underneath your head. It's very soothing. You know, you could even lay forward onto prone Shavasana if you want. I've been reading uh, things about how they're treating some of the coronavirus patients is actually turning them where they're facing down toward the floor. And that feel that that movement is apparently helping breathing and respiration get restored better than just laying on your back. So that's an option too, right? If you do do that one, you might want to put a blanket underneath your forehead so your nose doesn't get mush. But just pick the savasana that you feel called to do right now. Settle into it, make whatever adjustments you need to be comfortable, and then close your eyes. Let your eyes release into the back of your head. Let your tongue release away from the roof of your mouth. Unclench your jaw. Let the back of the throat release. Let the sides of the throat release. Let the base of the throat release. Let your ears draw inward. Completely relax the features of your face. Become quiet with it. And I mentioned at the beginning of class that Patanjali is kind of the philosophical father of yoga. He defines yoga as the practice of stilling the fluctuations of the mind. 
He then goes on to say, when that happens, we come to dwell in the space of our own true sense wonder. We see who we truly and essentially are. That's the aim of yoga. And that true essential self needs nothing. It's perfect, pure, just as it is. Be in that space of your true splendor. Abide there. Now from that seat of your true self, from the space of your own true splendor, inhale. Consciously use your inhalations to bring that awareness of your true self with you as you go about your work in the world. Place your hands on your ribcage, bend your knees, roll over to your right side, and use your hands to push yourself back up. And sit up straight and tall. Lift your chest well. Move your shoulder blades in, away from the neck, and into the center of the body so that your chest is nice and lifted. And close your eyes as you fold your palms together to your heart. Observe the effect that your practice has on you. Observe it on every layer of your being, from the physical to the most deeply spiritual. In gratitude to the benefit you receive from your practice of yoga, in gratitude to the people of the opportunity to learn and study and practice yoga with, and in gratitude to the lineage of Hatha Yoga itself, as practiced by Vikas Iyengar, reaching back to the sages of India, and down through a line of teachers and students to you here on the map in Austin, Texas, or wherever you happen to be in the world. Wow. Namaste. Namaste. All right, I'm going to unmute everyone so y'all can all say goodbye. Unmute all. There you go. Thank, you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and it was really nice. Hey. Good. I'm glad that y'all liked it. Good to see uh, everyone. Good to see you too. Good to see you. We only see you, not your head. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi. There you are. Hi. Thank Bye -bye. you again. Hi, Fatima. Hi, Chaya. Hi, Vicky. Hey, Shuba. Hi, Melinda. Thank you. You're welcome. Good to see you, Sugi. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a lovely day. Have a you lovely too. Day. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Have a great day, everyone. Bye, Steve. Thank you very much. Great to Bye. see you.